So I am Wenlan uh, Walder. <laughs> Wenlan Walder, WW. I am. Or wait, I, I did that wrong. Arwul Getry. And I'm a dangerous condemned servant. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, could be, it could be some fun for him. All right. I'm a merchant. All right. So actually, I messed that up, but I like Wenland Walder more, so we're going to go with that. Oh, yeah, we're keeping that. <laughs> <laughs> also, what does livery clothing mean? Oh, livery? Oh, I, I, nice. I had to look that up, too. Um, It's kind of like a uniform for what you do. Oh, okay. okay. So it's, it's kind of like kind of like very fancy clothes but also like it's a uniform that like, you could see a lot of people wearing like uh like those british royal guards that never move or they move in ridiculous wooden men kind of ways but they they would be dressed in rival and livery okay. assuming i i read that properly half an hour ago sounds right to me yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reputation right. dangerous and misfortune demoted. Demoted. <laughs> oh, and I already got bitter and droning for oh, two different it. things. Oh no. So ten D ten D ten, right? Okay, let's do that next. Sweet, so that'll be fun. Uh the only other Ooh. big thing too, so you guys all start with this for the starting gear. You get three days worth of ration, which is one slot, uh, a torch, which is one slot, and then roll 3d6 for your gold pieces. And then you can roll once on each of the starting gear tables on page 7, too. So you got like the expeditionary gear, uh, the uh, tools, trinkets, uh, all of that. All right. Sorry. Can you repeat that one more time? What am I doing now? So, three D twenty on that. I'm sorry. Yep. So, uh, so three D twenty. So we rolled uh, D twenty two for armor, helmets, and shields, and weapons, and then for each of the uh, so another three D twenty for the uh, expeditionary gear, tools, and trinkets. So six more of them. All right. I can do that. Yo, Burgundine! I love me some Burgundine. And I gotta take notes here. <laughs> oh, my guy's gonna be... He's really gonna be the most handsome of the group here. <laughs> so he's, um... Looks like rugged, pockmarked, with long hair and a sunken face. Oh, yeah. That man's a lady killer. <laughs> Got the, we got quite the crew so far. We've got the uh, the, the handsome guy over there, uh, the one that just got demoted uh, and is in his livery. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> demoted but still wearing his clothes. But uh, Athletic, tattooed, sharp face, and droning bitter voice. <laughs> All right. I have to figure out voice. <laughs> Gotta get that that, real that is always challenging. <laughs> I have, I have, I, I have rolled Groof. I don't know how you put G R and W in front of each other and consider that in wording, but Groof of Tulman, cleric of stout shape, with a clean-shaven face, square jaw, and no hair on his head. And also, I missed this too. Shoutouts to Ultra Mega for the subscription. Thanks, man. All right. I am ambitious, cautious, and discredited. Ambitious and cautious. <laughs> and discredited. And discredited. <laughs> <laughs> which is which? You've never you've never seen discredited folk in the clergy before. <laughs> I would be the first. Oh yeah, that's that's never happened in real life or fiction. <laughs> Uh, sweet. Uh, so I think, let me make sure, I think I've went through all the stuff to roll. Well, actually, uh, Keith, before we have you go through your stuff, I'll give you guys a little bit more time to get everything in there. I'm going to talk a little bit on what's going on with the world uh, as you all guys right. finalize it. But let me make sure I didn't forget to have you roll anything. 
I did not, it looks like. Uh, so we should be good on that side. Uh, so, yeah, so this is my homebrew world. Uh, this is Kazia, a uh, burger's plate, Kazia, before. Uh, this is my, uh, uh, usually I run it for my D&D campaign, but with this, and I wanted it to be low prep, so I picked a world I knew pretty easily. Uh, so we're doing Kazia. Uh, let me see if I can show the stream the map, and I'm going to post the map for you guys, too, just so you can see it. Uh, Burger, you're, you're familiar with this map, and we're going to get to go into a little bit of a bus story that happened with uh, my D&D &D crew, but they didn't get to investigate what actually took place here. Uh, so we're going to be taking a little look at the ruins of what was once the Dwarven Civilization of Ada. Uh, Ada was part of the, the Dosen Federation, uh, but Kazia's in a real time of turmoil right now. Uh, demons uh, are attacking. Demons uh, are new to the world and are trying to usurp the place of the gods and are plaguing uh, the nations of Kazia in the midst of a war between uh, its two greatest civilizations, Ateria and Sinaria. Uh, and it seems like chaos is just reigning supreme. Uh, what once was Ada, well, the uh, the home of uh, the dwarves in this large mountain uh, part of the Do uh, Dosen Federation uh, has been reduced to rubble. Uh, and we're going to find it with the adventurers. Uh, they're going to be there as kind of it was reduced to rubble and had to make their way out. Uh, but it was uh, Edo before it was uh, became the ruins it is now was known for its dwarven uh, inventors and weaponsmiths uh, it produced even amongst uh, the rest of the Dwarven Federation it produced some of the finest weapons and I uh, got caught up in a little bit of shadiness with the demons and after uh, my D&D &D party made some uh, some decisions to I said uh, what it pretty much amounts to a couple different nukes to the island to hash it all out uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> it has become the ruins it is today uh, and as we kind of go down, you see an area uh, where a great mountain once stood. Uh, but instead of rubble and pieces of debris like you'd expect, you see the ground around this giant hole uh, that seems like it just tunnels within the earth. Uh, it's covered in gold. Uh, it seems like uh, you see bits and rocks and pieces of gold around it. Uh, you see even the ground seems to have been marked in gold. Uh, but the things that truly draws the eye is this gigantic hole uh, that seems to go right into the bowels of the earth. <clears throat> and that's where we'll find our adventures. But before we go more into that, uh, we're going to take a look back at the crew. Uh, it started with uh, Keith. Uh, what did, uh, so what did you roll? What is your guy? All right. So he's a merchant uh, by the name of Wenwen Wolder. And he is rugged, pockmark. He has a long hair, a sunken face a booming voice, uh, frumpy clothes, but he's ambitious and greedy. He's an entertainer, and unfortunately, he's been blackmailed. Uh, my stats, sorry, I'm still uh, still behind a little, but I've got all the rolls here. Uh, do, 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 do. So he is quite strong. Uh, <laughs> so I rolled a, a six for strength and a one for dexterity. Uh, so he's quite strong and, uh, you know, a little clumsy, uh, but a five for will. So pretty strong mentally. Um, and then for his equipment, do, 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 do. Let me, the last kind of piece of that. He... is a uh, brigandine armor right. so a little bit of armor uh 16 so he has a helmet 14 so he has uh, i'm gonna guess he's probably carrying an axe that would make sense for him uh for exp he has a, a cart so it's plus four slots uh so maybe that is why he's a vicious merchant uh, 11 for tools. He, he has grease. Grease for the cart. That makes sense. <laughs> and for his trinkets, he has a salt pack. Uh, he must have lost the food along the way, but he's ready to carry it. Nice. And am I missing one thing? I think I got it all. That sounds like everything, I think. 
Wait, uh, wasn't it 3d6 for, for, for stat rolls? It was. What did he roll for stats? Keith, did you did you roll three d six? What? What? What did I do? Um, did you roll three d six for your stats? Like for each stat, right? Am I crazy? Oh no, yeah, three d six for each stat. Oh no. Wait, okay. Because like I thought you were like, oh, he's kind of strong, five strength. Ha <laughs> ha, he's made a joke. And then oh, I was like, oh wait. <laughs> I, I thought you said uh, bad rolls. <laughs> <Just like, yeah. laughs> uh, no, not that bad. Thought, yeah. All right. So he might be, he's average strength. So I guess that would be a 12 for strength. Let me roll. So 3d6. So his dexterity is eight. Oh man, this is just getting better. And 3d6. And his willpower is 13. So 12, 8, 13. Pretty good. All right. Uh, next on the list, uh, Burger, you're up. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm fixing my stats here. Uh, oh, all right. Well, we'll come back to you. No, no, no. Okay. It, it's all good. Uh, I'm almost finished, and that should be that. Okay, so here we got Essex Harkness, a ranger for us this very clean athletic build, uh, some visible tattoos, very illustrious hair, and uh, li livery, don't know how you pronounce it, I'm going to say livery, clothing of his once rank. Uh, but he doesn't seem to have all that. He's got the, that, you know the face. What, just that resting, annoyed look. Uh, he has a bit of a dangerous reputation about him, and it's also known that he's kind of been demoted recently. He's pretty bitter about that. But he, all in all, he seems uh, not to mind people all too much. Uh, and he is set up with some brigandine, which I love me some brigandine. I'm a nerd for armor, so those platelets set up uh, against each other with uh, the kind of cloth coat over it. Uh, and yeah. Perfect. Oh, equipment. Uh, no helmet, and for a weapon, he's got a mace. Uh, Rangers, they're known for a bit of, like, tact. Now he just, like, smashing things uh, after he's got something in his large tra uh, trap. Uh, however, I don't know what a sea lamp is, uh, but I do know what twine is, and I have some next to me. So, those, that's just so. So you got a sea lance? Yeah, a sea lance, yes. Uh, no, look that up. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is either. <laughs> like, like, like a sea lance? Like, like putty? <laughs> like cock? <laughs> that's, that's, that's what <laughs> okay, I'm thinking. Look, listen, I'm not great at reading or comprehending, but yes, a sea lance, oh, not, okay. not a sea lance. Uh, <laughs> so he's got, yeah, he's got some cock with him. <laughs> just imagine, just imagining like a, a person decked out in medieval brigandine with a caulking gun. That's. <laughs> I mean, he's got oh, the He's got to find some new work. He's got to... <laughs> Starting to get work as a carpenter around here, and everything's cool. <laughs> Perfect. All right, shy guy, you're up. You may be on mute. Yes, yes, my daughter came by, and I didn't want her screaming to affect the, uh, the stream. Yes, Grulth of Tolman is a cleric. He bears a chainmail helmet and shield and a staff. He is a, uh, as, as a cleric, he wears his, also, livery clothing over his, over his chainmail, so it gets very hot. It's very hot. He is a stout man of baldness and as a result again very hot under that chainmail it just a lot of sweat everywhere not information you needed but i felt it was helpful definitely paints the picture <laughs> he is he is ambitious cautious and discredited so no one really trusts him but uh you know he's there and he is of course a man of god Regarding my stats, 
My stats. Uh, I, too, rolled only one die for each at first. But my revised stats are a 4 for strength, an 18 for dexterity, and an 11 for will. Nice. RG was kind. <laughs> yes, yes, it's it's rare in my life. I promise I'll continue. I'll roll very badly. You'll know soon enough I'm not fudging this. I always have like the best luck when people can't see my dice. I'm like, no, yeah, like seriously, I'm being, I'm being. That's the whole reason as a DM, I roll open well, so everybody can see it. Because <laughs> you know how many times I get never grits. Believe yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like, you guys, you have to see this. Like, it's. I'm not making these wonders. grits. <laughs> All right. Uh, last but not least, Ed Kimmel, you're up. Okay. Well. How do you uh, pronounce your name? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> yeah, that's close enough. Doesn't okay, matter. <laughs> there is a K in there. There is a K. In there. Yeah, what'd you think it was a, a demo? No, I thought it was Admiral. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Not, Admiral not... Adama to join us today. No, not, not the worst way it's ever been mischaracterized. <laughs> well, I will be playing as Arwell Getry, a. Uh, rather average man with 12 strength 11 dexterity and nine will he is uh got a reputation for being a little bit dangerous but he comes from being a servant who was condemned now if you look him up and down you might realize that he's a brownie fella with a round face curly hair that's still somehow chiseled he uh, speaks in a very formal way, and he's known for being honorable, yet lazy. <laughs> oh, got that. Well, uh, yeah, let's see where that goes. why he was condemned as a servant. <laughs> he, he's not going to steal, but he's not doing any work. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> you get your own I won't gamble. lie to you. I didn't do anything today. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't plan to. <laughs> Sire, get your own damn wine. Tomorrow will be the same. I got, I got you some wine, but then I drank it. <laughs> oh, off we go. Perfect. We've got the, the crew of adventurers. I and who knows what may have brought them to Ada before the ruin came. Uh, Ada's a vast port, uh, kind of trading town, with many coming to uh, kind of buy and trade with uh, the dwarven smiths. Uh, but all of these adventures had assembled on the island of Ada uh, prior to this cataclysm. Uh, trading within the dwarven halls of the mountain, uh, kept going about their business, looking for work, uh, preaching their religion, uh, trying to find ambition cautiously, whatever they may have been up to before. Uh, but during their, as they're going about their day, uh, they started to hear signs of battle. Uh, you'd hear uh, this kind of shouts, uh, you hear the roar of a dragon, uh, just call signs of chaos uh, as a uh, battle broke out between uh, the demons of Kazia uh, and the hands uh, of the goddess of death. Uh, which is a little, bit of a little backstory for lore for the DAD game, we won't go too much into it. Uh, but you guys hear all of this, uh, you start to feel a rumble uh, within the mountain. Uh, you see people running back and forth, uh, some trying to escape uh, and get out of the mountain, some hunkering down for safety, and you feel the shaking intensify. I'm going to start this off with a dexterity saving throw, so roll me a dex save. Uh, so with this system too, so it's a d20 for your saves, uh, one's always a so this is backwards too. One's always a success. Twenty is always a failure for saves. Uh, so keep oh. that in mind. Oh, you need to. Okay, I see how this. You need to roll below your stats, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like oh. rogue, like rogue tracer. <laughs> I'm gonna kill it this game. <laughs> roll the solid I have two. A four. Woo! No. That was lucky. No. All right. Uh, so, how did everybody do so far? Fail. Fail. fail? Uh, so we have uh, how many fails? Uh, one for me. So I, I rolled an eleven. My dex is eight, right? So I would have had to roll a seven or lower. Mm -hmm. I think that's how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm a fail. All 
All right. Did anybody else fail, or anybody else succeed? Yeah, I uh, I have a four for that, so <laughs> I I I rolled a six. He, oh. he was not. He, he was too busy <laughs> looking at this good, looking at this chair. Like, how can I make a chair like this? What kind of wood is this made out of? Some rubble? Ah, eh, it's fine. Oh, no. no. Perfect. And uh, Odisha and Burger, remind me, what are you guys? Actually, everybody, if you guys can, put it in the Discord what your guys' PCs' names are, because I have already forgotten. I know WW <laughs> for, uh, for Odisha, but I cannot, cannot remember what the. the uh, Walder, I think, is part of it. Winland Walder. Wild- Win- Winland Walder. Okay. All right. Uh, so, as you guys feel the ground start to rumble and start to see uh, the mountain begin to almost shake itself apart, you see the gr- far- ground start to fall out from beneath you uh, as it just starts to almost implode within itself. Uh, Gr- Gruff, Tolman, and Arwell, Getry. You guys, uh, this is taking you off guard, but you're able to kind of maneuver yourself and position yourself as you fall, uh, just to to avoid uh, any serious injury. Kind of fall with grace uh, or bounce between rubble as you move. However, your guy would fall to keep himself from being harmed. Uh, But unfortunately, Winlan Walder and Ethics Harkness, you guys, uh, you have a tough time falling. Uh, you are taken completely off guard. Ethics, if you're looking at that chair that you'd love to build, uh, you are just completely surprised as the ground starts to rumble and pull itself apart, uh, casting you into the darkness of the mountain below. Uh, and you come crashing down to the ground. Uh, and you guys are going to take 2 HP damage. Oh. We, we rolled a single D6 for HP, right? That's right. Uh, let me make sure there's nothing else you add to that. Uh, we have one single D6. Oh, I'm at one. <laughs> uh, do we do we add, do we use our armor to help with damage? Or... Oh, let me check on this one. This is, this is a new system for me on that side. I'm not. I know armor will help you for getting hit let me see if it'll help here i think what i read was that sorry oh go ahead what do you want to say i think what i read was that uh your armor functions a bit like dr Mm -hmm. so if you have a two in armor and you take two points of damage then that then it just kind of cancels out i think that's what i read i know that was with a Tax. We'll say that works for both too. So, uh, what are you guys' armors? What's your uh, armor score for it? One. One. All right. Um, minus two. Two. All right. Uh, so, uh, Winland, you fall. Uh, you probably make a loud clank as you hit to the the rocky floor, but you gotta walk up, uh, wake up, or get up unscathed. Uh, where Harkness, uh, you you. Armor helps you out a little bit, but you definitely feel that blow as you guys come to. And basically, I imagine. Oh, oh go sorry. ahead. No, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I imagine he slides down with some grace, some difficulty. Armor's caught most of it. He looks triumphantly. Then that chair <laughs> before it just falls on him. <laughs> on. Perfect. Will you all. Uh, as the, the dust clears, and this is probably goes on for some time with the mountain shaking and rumbling, rocks falling all around you, uh, and you guys just kind of falling through the darkness uh, until you collide with uh, the bottom of the floor. Some of those of you who are able to fall gracefully uh, can able to kind of stand up and dust yourself off, where others may have to kind of shake it off a bit. Uh, but looking around, you see darkness surrounding you, uh, but you do hear kind of the rustling of others. Uh, you kind of come to and notice the party surrounding you. Hello! Good I have nothing further. <laughs> well, it's a good start. Hello. Greetings. That was quite an earthquake. It's been quite some time since I, uh, didn't fall down. How are all of you? A bit crestfallen, if you catch my breath. But I'm not quite sure. 
Huh. Does anyone have any explanation for this current predicament we find ourselves in? Because the gods are angry. The the gods are yes. angry. Yes. They are. They often are. A in fickle people. In general, or at somebody in particular. Yes. <laughs> if you're just been, I asked for an explanation. That's the one I expected. No one did, but I, I, I got it. So, oof. you're there. You've been rather quiet. You didn't walk across yourself, or, uh, pointing at. Uh, Wayland. <laughs> so Wenland gets up, dusts himself off. It would take more than a fall to damage the Wenland Walder, the famous merchant. <laughs> and uh, just to be clear, um, Arwell is not bothered to get up. <laughs> <laughs> Played into that laziness. <laughs> hey, I got, I've got nowhere to be. <laughs> is, is the floor surprisingly comfortable there, Arwen? I mean, it's better than standing. <sighs> Let me know when you find a way out of here. Till then, just... Well, till then. <laughs> Is he, like, on his back or face down? <laughs> um, let's... Let's say face down. <laughs> face down! <laughs> <laughs> that is weird to be the image of that, just, like, oh. face down in the dirt. Hey. There you go. My good man, where's your hustle? You'll never make a dime like that. I must have left it up top. This uh, man, despite his lack of will to live, is quite clever. And such, uh, as it kind of just rolls on up, uh, goes down, tries to start picking you up. All right, all right, fine, fine, fine. And he'll go ahead and push himself up the rest of the way and groan the entire time up, the entire way up. <sighs> well, how well can we see down here? Uh, so it's it's pretty dark. Uh, let's, uh, so it's you guys could probably make out each other just through kind of some bare, like small rays of light uh, escaping from the top down. But it's definitely uh, you're not able to see too much past your uh, probably about a couple feet past your hand. Uh, can I light a torch? Definitely can. Okay. W beforehand, I'd like to do a perception check to see if there's a gas leak or anything. I don't want to nuke us all. <laughs> well, guys, light. that's that's extreme. See you later. <laughs> you made one fatal mistake, uh, and it is over. <laughs> <laughs> So definitely, uh, so I won't make you roll for that. No, no gas leaks at all. Uh, you are okay. uh, able to uh, light this torch, and you see a pretty chaotic scene around you. Uh, you see, Kevin, probably better depth. Uh, your party members or the people that are kind of surrounding you after this crisis has fallen, uh, befallen you. Uh, but you see uh, kind of just wreckage around you see great stone pillars uh broken and kind of scattered around in debris uh you see uh chairs abound uh the one that was uh harkness was looking at uh you also see uh, unfortunately uh covered in some of the debris bodies of dwarves and traders and humans alike uh who would come to trade with the docent federation scattered amongst the wreckage uh, but the thing that catches your eye and where you see some of that stray light uh, coming from, uh, it looks like uh, pretty far up and to the right, uh, you do see what looks to be kind of a ray of, you're not sure if it's sunshine or fire uh, or something, but you do see some light escaping through and kind of filtering down. Uh, and you see one that's kind of straight up and probably about a couple hundred feet up and to the right. And you see another one where this one does have a little bit more of a flickery cadence about 200 feet up and to the left. 
was a damnable state of affairs. Whoever has caused this, I swear to them, they're getting a complaint straight to their upper management. <laughs> oh, good man with the torch. That was a, that was a good idea. I, you know, of course, I would have used my own torch if that merchant didn't swindle me. Because, of course, I have the means to, to carry such, a, such devices. I would never doubt such a thing. Of course, you're a moneyed individual with perhaps many torches. Perhaps even seven. Oh, yes, of course. I, I, a dozen torches. Uh, but again, you know, I, I, they, they swindled me and, and uh, they didn't really think to, to raise it with the, the management, as you say, being myself a, a, such a fine fellow. Yes, yes. Better let the thieves, to let the thieves get away with it. Yeah. I've always found that to be true. So, this situation we're in, are there any checks that perhaps we should roll individually to proceed? <laughs> I wonder if maybe a perception check could be called for. Is that a thing in Cairn? I, I don't I don't see it on my character sheet. I don't know if I can roll a, a look -see. I can't. The fact you're saying this with the voice leads me to believe this is all I can. That's some, that's some oh, pretty absolutely. hardcore flaw stuff. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just looking up at my torch and asking, God, help me see something <laughs> that I don't see right now. His name may be Teagden. I don't know. Unfortunate perception is not a thing with this system. Uh, so it is more of an exploratory system than uh, kind of getting to uh, use a bird's eye view. You do see kind of those two separate, uh, separate rays of light or the kind of holes through the dark cavernous abyss that you guys have fallen into uh how do you all proceed uh they're both a climb away uh the one on the left with the flickering light is a little bit lower i propose an idea you are make a human laughter i climb you once i get to the top i take my mace slam it into the wall get it nice and stuck and then you stand on me and continue to make a human ladder. I then climb you again. We repeat this until we get to that flickering light up there. Is that required? I, I, I was under the impression that a climb away just meant that it was it wouldn't be hard to get at. That was my Good understanding. Man, I, I think we should just climb, except without the human bladder and the mace into the wall thing. But who's the fun of that? Where's the risk? The adventure? That What's like the reward and uh, the risk? I, I, we're just uh, risking falling. Yeah, well, we Why? did fall into the hole of darkness. And that was not great. Why do it again? Because it is exceptionally fun. Imagine if one of you fell from a great height. It'd be hilarious. No, Imagine I body. did fall from a great height, and it <laughs> was not hilarious, my good man. No, you are true. Listen, man, you are true to your work, actually. Just chair, give me good water. Back in my cheerleading days, we did this kind of crap all the time. It was an absolute blast, but now it's not the time! <laughs> We're trapped. You are true. You, you are true. Let's just climb. Does anyone require being carried? I will not do it. But one of you could carry each other. And I'm, I'm, I'm just going to start climbing. Yeah. Towards the uh, flickering yeah. one. I'm just going to point to, uh, I guess, what is Ad Kimmel's uh, character? I have to look it up here. Arwell. Arwell. Yeah. And I'll say, oh, maybe that fine gentleman will, uh, will carry those. Uh, he seems to be ambitious. Uh, and I'll just follow him up as I climb. I'll, um, I will certainly come back for you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like laughing to himself under his breath as he starts to climb up. Begrudgingly climbs up. All this effort. That's the actual kind of stop him as he's starting. Allow me to carry you. Of course, you're only for later, but allow me this kindness for you. Uh, torn between being carried and the possibility of being dropped, he errs on the side of caution 
and then says no and airs on the side of laziness. Okay, sure. That'd be great. Thank you. That was quite a tumble. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, so, everybody make me a strength saving throw. Uh, unfortunately, Harkness, you will have disadvantage. <laughs> so, how he's carrying him is he takes him, uh, basically just grabbing his legs, just kind of wrings him out and slaps him on like a, like a scarf. Uh, just over the shoulder. Am I rolling to uh, to hold on to him? I pass. I think it, uh, it, if it meets it, does it fail or does it succeed? Uh, if it meet, I'm not sure, but we'll say it, if it meets it, it succeeds. Yes. <laughs> uh, so you're good, actually. So yeah, you don't have to roll to hold on. You'd have to roll a dexterity save if he couldn't <laughs> keep uh, get you up there, but. Uh, luckily, it looks like he is able to haul you up, uh, even with uh, the added weight. <laughs> Wait, it's it's rolling under, right? Rolling. Uh, I yeah. think if you meet it, you. I'm not sure if you meet it, you beat it. Uh, but I'm. We're gonna say that for today. We're gonna say, uh, Woo! So I failed again. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that that did not go well for me. I, oh. I just keep. Crawl. Shy guy, you're never going to Pulling gonna at there. the wall. I just keep pulling at it, pawing at it like a cat. And it just, it just won't. The wall is not forgiving. This would have not Rupture. happened if you did the idea of the human chain. Okay, I agree. The human chain idea is great. I'll come back down now and help me get up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so... Come now. What's with what's with the weight? He's he's put he's put in. Uh, I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know how to pronounce that name. That name, man. Uh, Arwell. Arwell. Yeah. Arwell. He's got, he's putting him down gently. Just setting him down. I I'm at, uh, Do you just go limp as you sit down, or do you stand? No, I'll just I'll just sit. Get comfortable. We're not going okay. anywhere. Sounds like you're going back down there. I might as well take a load off. Yeah. yeah. But first, Keegan, you got, you got the thing. Yeah, so uh, you are able to go back down there. So you guys, you're not falling off, uh, but you are getting a little tired as you kind of climb up this thing. You guys will say you fell off if you wanted to, uh, but you're gaining a fatigue uh, as a result of this failure. Uh, and so fatigue in this system is uh, a little bit different than exhaustion. Uh, you get uh, basically any PC deprived of crucial need, or any, uh, you're, so you're able to kind of recover HP uh, or ability scores while you've got that fatigue on there. And there's a couple oh, of different no. ways you can gain fatigue through the system. Uh, some of them are spell casting, and some of them are like uh, having a tough climb of it uh, after uh, going through this. Okay, so I failed I'm by one. one. Fatigue. Yeah, so I feel like I made it up. Oh, yeah. uh, but I... <laughs> Goodness gracious! Climbing! It's not something they taught you in the seminary. So I get... So Wendlin is, like, breathing real hard. He looks over at uh, Harkness, and he, like, sees him, like, that he carried this dude up there, and he's far perfectly fine. And I just shake my head. <laughs> I was very good at my job as a professional tree climber and scout. It's quite That's excellent. Kind of <laughs> yes. You should have seen it dropping the traps up from above. Just many a fine game like that. What's a venison? Oh traps! I thought you said tap. I was I was thinking about maple syrup. <laughs> Oh, I, just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Am I ruining the theme? Are we? Are no, we no, no, no. That was darker? that was great. I, I just don't. I don't know how to expand on that. I don't know how to top that. <laughs> so now we're out. What do our eyes see? Oh, and actually, I realized I forgot to ask you. Are you going right or left? Yes. Right. <laughs> Let's go with the shorter climb. 
<laughs> the shore to climb with the flickering lights, if, if that's right. I mean, I'm just along for the ride, so... Yeah, I was going for the flickering light. That that seemed more interesting to me. All right. Yeah, I, I bet like uh for uh, Arwell, he's feeling great. Like he got a good little rested, got to relax uh, as uh, ethics brought him up. I can't believe that worked. <gasps> oh, Lucky me. All right. So yeah, you guys make your way up after. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, but you guys are able to haul through. Some of you getting a little bit more tired than others as you make your way up this daring climb. Uh, but as you do get to uh, kind of level ground, you see that flickering light behind you. Peering in, you see what looked to be kind of the remains of what you'd guess is probably like a marketplace. But it's not like a marketplace you've seen before. And for some of the more greedy members, like you guys see gold abound but the gold doesn't look like you'd expect it to you see almost like carved and in intricate motion statues of people uh just scattered throughout this makeshift marketplace all coated in a complete uh this pristine looking gold plate uh you also see that some of the material in the marketplace is coated in gold as well. You see some golden apples, some golden grapes, uh, golden leaves, uh, all just kind of explicitly plated in gold. Uh, just as uh, you kind of look through and you do see it kind of stationed around, even though that some of the, the ceiling has been damaged, but you do see some kind of uh, bazaars with uh, light kind of just flickering with fire, uh, making so you, uh, you can see kind of around as you guys peer through this symposium. So Wenlin is a greedy, ambitious merchant. Uh, <laughs> so he will immediately perk back up after his uh, rough climb and say, ah, fortune smiles upon us. Of course, of course, I will return this to the owner and just take a small, uh, you know, finder's fee. And he will immediately go over and start trying to pocket the gold coins. <laughs> oh, hey, Sadat, so I'm, I'm moving through here. He's, he's, uh, no. <laughs> it's just like looking at the grips and the people, the, the gold statue, uh, and the golden, like, stuff. Just like, mm-mm. I, I go, I'd go up against the dragon. I am not touching this stuff. <laughs> So all, all this gold-plated everything that we're looking at, um, when you said, like, gold-plated grapes, you don't mean people are eating those, right? That's just decorative? Oh, it looks like... Uh, you see the grapes, the apples, the leaves? Uh, it looks like they're kind of, like, put in, like, big, like, uh, grocer's bins. Uh, you see that there are kind of some people with the golden statues standing in front of them like they're looking at them. Uh, but they are in large, just kind of bins uh, throughout the area. Now, all right. Is, does it look like it's like a clean gold plated, like like it's actually plated in gold and not just like dipped in it and it's kind of drippy and bad, but is it like an actual like defined edges and curves and stuff like that? Oh, it, intricately. It looks like uh, if it was dipped, it was expertly dipped or carved. Uh, it looks seamless. The gold, you don't see any rivets or any uh, any signs. like the, It looks like the flesh of a grape, but just in gold. Yeah, no, Harkness is spooked. He, This is basically like walking into the forest and just uh, finding a mannequin. Just standing there. He's noping out of that. Just like, hmm. Creepy. Oh, I'd like to pluck a grape. Perfect. Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, Harkness is uh, not Harkness. Uh, Arwell is plucking a grape, uh, and Winland is. Uh, Winland, are you getting coins or are you looking? Uh, really... I'm scooping up whatever I think is value that I can put in my pockets. <laughs> all right. Both of you guys, give me a will save. <laughs> all right. Let's see, D20. Roll the three. Lucky me. <laughs> hey, I passed. Hey. How did our will do? He, uh, he rolled a three with a will of nine. 
Oh, sweet. So you guys both passed. That's yeah. a, you load up on some grapes, Arwell, and uh, Winland, you just kind of pocket any... Uh... Actually, I should clarify. Are you just pocketing uh, small valuables, or are you trying to grab pieces of statues, too? Uh, we're going to go with small valuables. <laughs> I, I might have a little bit more climbing ahead of me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll go over and I'll peruse the produce, maybe snag a few apples, a bunch of grapes, uh, go produce, you know, see if I can find any uh, any smaller, like, trinkets and bobbleheads, uh, you know. Perfect. Well, you guys both load up. Uh, there's just a smorgasbord uh, of different gold fruit that you can just... Hey, you guys, and you guys... Well, you're both lazy and well, one of you's lazy and ambitious. You're both ambitious. Uh, so you guys, <laughs> <laughs> this is the easiest way you found to make money in your life. And you think that you can find like you get out of here and alive. You can find a good buyer for this. This, this is good gold. Uh, you pocket it up, uh, load your pack, uh, and you guys are no 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 consequences. All right. Yet. That oh, we know of. Yeah, yeah. Cut, cut, <laughs> cut it out with that long-term talk, man. That's... <laughs> Our will is living I mean, in I'm ambitious moment. too, but I am not tempting this fate right now. Imagine, imagine you you've worked in like a forest or something most of your life. You occasionally see the odd thing, but you kind of put it in your head like, what is and is not natural. This is not natural. Harkness is spooked. He's just like, oh, nope, nope. You know, you <laughs> just I am in. not desecrating God's sanctuary. In the room, you see uh, three, kind of a, this is a large room, and you see two exits, uh, each going to the left and right, and one going forward. Uh, around the exits, you see more of the statues. Uh, kind of some look to be. Just, posed in motion some look to have a more still look uh as you kind of look around and see what used to be the uh, the marketplace uh so you guys have left right and straight ahead with statues surrounding uh well what's uh the crew thinking of doing what what are these options looking like what does left look like what does right and what does middle or is it all just uh the same so uh so i could have you repeat that uh, what does left look like? What does right look like? And what does middle or do they all look the same? Oh, they do look different. Uh, that's a good question there. Uh, so left and right, uh, they both have kind of uh, low-key doors. You see kind of wooden doors uh, around them. Uh, you do see more people clustered, or more, I should say, more statues clustered uh, around the left door, fewer around the right door. And some of the statues around the left door look like they were poised in motion. Uh, so some look like they were sprinting, some look like they're walking quickly uh, towards that left door, where the right uh, just seems to be a little bit sparse. Uh, in front uh, of the door in the middle, though, you do see kind of a clearing. Uh, not as many people, but you do see uh, kind of multiple statues poised uh, in front of it. Uh, some of them holding weapons, some of them poised uh, for uh, like defense, it looks like. Uh, but you do see intricate doors in front uh, of the, the path straight forward. Uh, you see these are not carved out of wood. They're carved uh, out of uh, kind of intricate stone in the front. The weapons gold. Yeah, the weapons are gold. Ooh, I want one of those weapons. So I'm admiring. Wenland's admiring his apple in the intricacy. And he kind of looks over at uh, at uh, uh, Arlen. I or, or, uh, I apologize, forgot his name already. Arwell. Uh, Arwell. Arwell. Looks over at Arwell. He says, he says, "Do you see this intricacy? Do you think this is demonic?" Or is this really good craftsmanship? He says, I ain't gonna lie, people pay more for demonic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then he looks up in mid-sentence and he sees like a golden sword uh, carried by one of the statues. And he goes, ooh, people will pay for that also. I mean, it's right here. Might as well. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna go take a sword. <laughs> <laughs> They make right. terrible weapons, by the way. Just uh, they really do. Yeah. <laughs> e Ethix is going to stop him for just a second. Just like, wait a moment. Let me just 
make sure. Because you don't know what will happen once you touch it. But let's just make sure this isn't one of those we touch it, they jump at some situations. And he'll, like, poke it with the mace. Just, like, poke, uh, scatter a little bit, like, scuttle away. How uh, after he does so. Alright, so you poke one of the ones with the weapon? Uh, at every roll initiative, though, you see you poke it, uh, uh and you do some... I didn't think it would actually happen! <laughs> you see, uh, it start to shift, uh, and you see golden wings unfurl behind it, uh, and it lets out, like, a screeching, ah, uh, as it bears <laughs> its, uh, sword towards you. Good uh, man, why would you poke it? <laughs> we were trying to disarm it. Sure! <laughs> I remember grunt. Everything that I stood up to now. Uh, right. uh, so if we survive this, I shall take your confession. <laughs> All right, initiative. Let me remember how to do initiative. Uh... I really hope that initiative is like the rest of the game, where low numbers are better. I think it's uh... the one area that's different, if oh. I remember right. Uh, I didn't know I rolled twice, but I rolled a nine. Yeah, you have a solid one over here, Buckaroo. Nineteen. All right, let's... I, I got that. I got that real high number. Because uh, initiative. Oh, where is that at? Okay, so yeah, so you make a deck save to act before your opponent. So I've got to actually roll some dice myself. Uh, so it's a deck save, so low uh, beneath you, uh, beneath your limit is better. Uh, so... Okay. Did you play care more often? I'm, kill <laughs> I'm killing it, baby. Um... I think I'm dead last. Uh, the nice thing with this one, too, so they, yeah, they... Uh, so both of the golden statues fail their save. Uh, so uh, the the party, you guys get to act uh, first. Uh, who uh, who all passed their save? I did. All right, uh, you're up first. Let's go. Oh, that that does not roll. Okay. Um. So these thing we're rolling for initiative, and these things have a certain hostility to them. I take it. Oh, they don't yeah. look pleased to have been you know stabbed okay uh, i go up to the nearest one and i hit it with my staff all right make a attack roll with your staff okay so uh um, and with this too you just roll whatever the damage is for that weapon uh and if it okay. goes over the person's dr so it kind of assumes all hits automatically hit uh, and if you go mm. over their DR, uh, you get to do damage to their HP. So I rolled a five on my damage die. All right. Uh, let me see what their HP or their AC is. Or... No, we just covered the, their DR. Yeah, DR. Uh, so you rolled a five? Yeah, you... Mm -hmm. Feel that gold kind of crunch, uh, and you do two uh, two damage to its HP as you slash that golden statue. Yes, I'm, my staff is well known for slashing damage. And that's, oh, that would be why I cut it in half. It's a glaive now. I like them better anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, who else uh, succeeded on their uh, deck save? I did, but I'm not sure what to roll for an axe. Oh, that's a good question. Let me see what axe is. Oh. That is a good question. It's not on there. Let me uh, go uh, to the website. It is a D8. D8. A you. spear, sword, mace, axe, flail. All D8s. All right. You know, it's sad when you have trouble identifying the dice based on shape. It's been so long. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. There we go. That's the right dice. A seven. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Uh, which one are you attacking? Are you attacking? Um, whichever one's closest to me. 
Oh. Or perhaps the one that's already been damaged. <laughs> you might kill it. I mean, if it's farther away. <laughs> we have a movement of 40 feet. Move those lazy legs. Ah. Uh, fine. <laughs> After much encouragement. Or, you know, harassment, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's the church. It's harassment. It's always <laughs> harassment. <laughs> Arwell will begrudgingly saunter over to the gold bean that has sprouted wings and taken a taken a hit to land another. Because, hey, maybe it's already been hit. I don't have to hit it as hard. Perfect. With that seven, finish it. So he will, once again, stride over to it. With, without much form or just kind of almost cartoonishly just bonk on the uh, head of the creature and let's see what happens. You bonk that, uh, that golden statue on the head. Uh, you see a small crack form. Uh, that crack just begins to widen and widen uh, until it just shatters. Uh, the creature's face falling one way, its wings falling the other. Uh, it just crumbles into a large pile uh, of gold with a sleeping gold liquid leaking from it. Hey. Oh, not a bad maze. <laughs> All right. Uh, who else? Uh, who else beat the save? I think. I think that's it, baby. Right? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm uh, not sure how that goes for everybody that failed their save. That's a good question. Uh, all right, we'll just have you the party. You guys can get to go first. Uh, so, uh, Winlin and uh, uh, Harkness, you guys are up. Let you go, in. Yeah, you want to go ahead and go first? No. <laughs> All right, so uh, Winlin will sadly see the gold uh, leaking from the destroyed uh, statue and a big sigh and just take heart in knowing that he's already collected his fortune and he'll take a swing at uh, another of the statues. And so I have a axe, uh, which is a D8. I <laughs> rolled a one. You clink into the gold statue, but the gold holds firm. Uh, the creature just growls at you. Yep, and then I'm going to run away behind uh, everyone else. So, yeah, your turn. So, I got me. He's going... At first, he's afraid, but then it kind of clicks in his head. He, he knows. This is also everything else. There were so many unknowns. That's why I was afraid. But this is hostile, and that other one can bleed. And if it can bleed, it can die. <laughs> so he's gonna go for it, uh, quite brutally, brutally and uh, viciously, with a one. Just like taking his mace, swinging, 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 swinging. No. Oh, oh what would you get? A one. A one. <laughs> a one. So this a vicious strike. Uh, why won't you die? <laughs> so you see, uh, the base just balking off, no cracks forming. Uh, you see the creature flex its wings. Uh, it just golden claws extended. Uh, it's going to. Uh, it's work that's gonna pick on poor. Uh, poor Harkness on that side. Uh, so you see its claws extending, and ooh, it's got a nasty claw attack. Uh, it is going to make a claw attack towards you, Harkness. What happens if we drop the zero HP? So it depends. Uh, so if you just j- drop to zero HP, you get to take a scar. Uh, if you drop below zero HP, so if, uh, like if a hit brings you down from three to, to zero with nothing left over... You just have to roll on the scar table. Uh, if you go below zero, uh, you are dying. Let me bring up what that exactly means. 
Uh, for our viewers, it's a little more rule looking up than I like to do usually, but this is a new system for everybody, so. Uh... Well, <laughs> scars are so so brutal too. Like some of them are like, oh no, it, you look screwed up, but then there's like a broken limb, or doomed mortal wound. Like <laughs> scars are not screwing with you. The next time you save against critical damage, it's a fail. You die horribly. <laughs> <laughs> and also, and you just die. that's just if you get the scar. So if you go below zero with the damage remaining, it gets minus from your strength score. If you go to zero strength, uh, you are dead. Uh, that's one thing I forgot to mention with the system too. So death is a little bit more common in this system. Uh, so I'll let you guys know, so I'll show, uh, these guys are 2d6 for their attack. Uh, they are a little bit more of a nasty customer. Uh, so this is going to be, uh, oof, eight. Is he, how is he? <laughs> we only got to roll 1d6 for our health, and they're rolling three? <laughs> just two, just two. Oh, but three strings now. <laughs> uh, so the slash. How does it? Oh, but like, which? Uh, the, do you know the Yu-Gi-Oh theme for when Exodia is summoned? That Kai. <laughs> just the scene of Kaiba getting blasted back. How, how is he obliterated? Because he he's still alive, but barely. So, oh, actually. And you must make a strength saving throw too to avoid critical damage. Is this before? Is this save made before or after the decrease? Uh, they, they have it after in the placement, so I think it is after. So that'll be reason. Uh, damage that reduces the target's HP uh, below zero decreases the target's strength about the amount remaining. Yeah, they must then make a strength saving throw to avoid critical damage. Critical damage. So you're gonna roll below a three. A three or below. No, no, I got a ten. Right. <laughs> critical damage. Uh, so any PC that suffers critical damage uh, cannot do anything but crawl weakly, grasping for life. If given aid, uh, then, then they will be able to stabilize. If left untreated, they die within the hour. So I think I can summarize this up. Shuni, get you in. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Essex is, Essex is dying. He, he is very much, he is clinging to life, but very much dying. Uh, you see the gargoyle. If you see a white light, go arms, to it. Uh, and slash across, uh, uh, Harkness's chest, just bloody rivets left, uh, and poor ethics eyes uh, just sit to the ground. Uh, I think we roll this each turn. Let me make sure. Uh, do I do I bother rolling? Because I can't do anything. Uh, you can roll see if you want to crawl away, maybe. Uh, yeah, somebody, I'm not sure if we roll each time, but we're going to roll each time on this. Somebody roll a dexterity <laughs> saving throw. That's a d12. Success! Uh, fast failure. Alright, the creature succeeded this time. Uh, did anybody uh, beat their success number by more than four? No! <laughs> Alright. Uh, you see the creature turn... Uh, this time, uh, it's going to pick all the one who initially wanted to steal its sword. Uh, so, Winland, uh, you see it come, uh, it turn its just gnarly looking face uh, that has a resemblance to a dwarf that just looks kind of greatly twisted uh, with its golden features. Uh, it is holding its sword in one hand, its claws in the other. Uh, it is going to make a slash at you. And Essex CL at it. Your job, you <laughs> alien shit. Ah, 
you can. So make a will save. Uh, if you succeed, ah, maybe we'll. T I've rolled the damage, so maybe he will turn the strike on you. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's, uh, oh, five above the wheel. Okay, so this is on uh, this is on uh, Wayland. Uh, five. Oh, I'm down. I have three HP and two armor, so I'm actually at zero. Oh, you're just at zero. So just roll a Ooh. scar check. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we that's are uh... TPKing early. All right. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it, that's just a straight uh, D uh what D12 actually. D12. All right. Okay. Ooh, this could be great. Uh, yeah, I've been rolling fantastic. This is yeah. gonna be awesome. All right, uh, eleven. Oh, it's not that's got to be a good one. All right, <laughs> mortal wound. Okay, uh, you are <laughs> deprived and out of action. You die in one hour unless healed. Well, but there's good news here. Uh, you know, upon recovery roll 2d12 it takes a new result as your max hp so oh. this is really a win-win after you guys do all the work <laughs> so, you, so you see the creature after slashing down harkness he makes a backhand slash cutting up uh it takes Waylon down uh the party is up what are you doing <laughs> uh, well, hopefully rolling more than one damage <laughs> <laughs> well um I'm gonna give it a lot of and swing. Yeah, I'm just gonna swing, swing with the axe to give it a good old whack, and see how that goes. All right, that is a six. Nice. Nice. Uh, you clash into it with the axe, taking a chunk of its golden exterior off. Uh, it, it looks, it looks hard. It looks hard. I was hoping that would hurt more. <laughs> oh boy I, that's kind of it for for our will get tree holy man you want to give it your all oh, here well, you, you seem to have attempted to damage it I will assist you in your attempt to destroy this demon gold thing that is a five Let me see. Just enough. Take it down. And with with my glaive staff, <laughs> I bonk his head with a bladed bludgeoning attack. And maybe it splits in half. And there's stuff there. <laughs> so you chop it down. Uh, you do see uh, the... Uh, golden statue split apart, gold just gold, liquid gold molting through it. Uh, and you guys are able to clear this fight. Uh, definitely looked a little hit and run, and this is uh, and I'll mention too, this is a lethal system. Uh, sometimes it is better to run, uh, <laughs> but uh, you guys did uh, <laughs> beat the threat. Every, oh, actually, I should say people are living so far, uh, but you all see your two friends, Waylon and Harkness, on the ground, uh, looking bleeding, looking rough. Uh, Ethics is going to reach towards the wrong person here. Uh, as well? Ar Arwell. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's going to reach to him and say, You must, you must carry me. <laughs> There's... As I carried you. <sighs> I can appreciate the irony in this. Let me help you. And then he'll, again, offer him some... Would rations help get him back on his feet at all? Would uh, taking a moment to, to feed this poor, beat-up, decrepit fella? Can I offer you an egg in this chat? <laughs> <laughs> Here, Eat! I actually got a picture of that needs to be right above my computer. Nice. So, healing. Uh, so, a moment's rest uh, and a swig of water uh, will restore HP. Uh, but they put in the book, but may leave the party vulnerable. Uh, so, it won't improve ability loss. Ability loss requires a week's rest and the aid of a skilled healer. 
Uh, but for you're just kind of patching wounds, getting everybody on their feet, uh, a little bit of rest and some water uh, will uh, help you restore uh, your lost HP. I start sprinkling holy water on the people that fell down. <laughs> Does this mean that Get be uh... you're you're better now? <laughs> And I say some holy words that escape me in the moment. This means that Wenlin gets to roll for big boy HP now. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, look at that. Yeah. Uh, oh, hey, eight. Oh. There we go. See, scars are good in this game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at this tough guy. Sweet. So you guys get some rest in... Uh... Have some holy water sprinkled upon you, uh, which gives Waylon a newfound strength. Uh, and we'll actually take a bit of a break here. Uh, so, and also before we go to break, for anybody that's new to the channel, we have games every Tuesday. Uh, so we've got this Tuesday's, uh, we're going to do a different name. Uh, Kieran, which is the new name I'm using for it. Uh, so this uh, week is that. Uh, we've also got next week, uh, Back to Invasion, which is our other every other week campaign. Uh, so if you're new, uh, drop a follow. We've got games all the time. Uh, I'll probably be adding Thursday into the rotation as well. So drop a follow. Uh, and we'll be posting this to you on our uh, YouTube channel too, which you can find in the uh, About section. Uh, but we're going to take a break, so it's 8.30. Uh, we'll be back at like 8.40. Uh, so come join us then. Hey. Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, back from break. Uh, so we've just left the party as they had a pretty vicious battle with some golden gargoyles uh, and uh, came out victorious, uh, though a little bit bloodier, a little worse for the wear uh, after doing battle with those fearsome foes. Uh, before we dive into that, though, for anybody new to the channel, uh, drop a follow. Uh, every Tuesday we've got some fun content coming. Uh, with uh, Invasion being our next big one. And then uh, end of this month, uh, the 31st of May, uh, we're doing our Coyote and Crow uh, one-shot uh, with a number of uh, the same players, I think. Because uh, Keith Berger and who else is mm -hmm. on that one? Just you two for this one? It may just be these two on this one. Uh, but they'll be jumping in on that one as well uh, for the Coyote and Crow system. Uh, we're actually going to be giving away a copy of the PDF for the system, too, uh, so you guys can play it at your table as well. So join us for that, uh, May 31st, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, same channel on that side, and uh, we'll get to check out that system. Uh, but yeah, let's dive back into the action. So you guys are in uh, this crowded marketplace filled with other statues, but you've just come across the, the two that were armed, uh, and after trying to... Uh, let's say acquire their golden weaponry uh you got to uh meet uh get to have a little bit of a battle with them and you destroyed them quite viciously and you're left alone in this marketplace uh with doors on the both left and the right as well as straight ahead with the straight ahead doors having a more intricate stone feel to them what's the group doing so are these like gold creatures or is it like I want to take a closer look at the their remains see what we're dealing with this is interesting perfect so you take a look at the remains and it's like nothing you've really seen before uh, so you kind of chop into it and you look uh, if you chopped it you probably take a look at the one you guys chopped in half uh, and you look at it and you see blood or what you think is blood oozing out of it uh, but it has a golden kind of real heavy texture to it uh, but looking at the insides of the creature, uh, it looks to be like a normal, 
or what, what would normally, or what it looks like be a normal-ish vascular system. Uh, you see organs, you see blood uh, veins. Uh, There's a lot of the things you'd expect to see for a living creature. Uh, but the difference is it's, it's all coated in, or it's all gold. It's all gold plated, all gold covered. Uh, just a real, real unnatural uh, look to it. Hmm. So Lynn will walk up beside him and go, mm, definitely demonic. That's definitely worth the price then. Well, actually, <laughs> you, you see, there, there might be a crushman out there who's just insane enough to do this. Goals, people, goals. <laughs> well, I mean, so kind of like poking at the, like, what's left when it comes to the organs and stuff like that. I don't know if how much gold you handle, but gold is really heavy. That's a very dense metal. Is it like dense gold or is it like, you know, cheapo, depot, fake looking plated stuff? Oh no, this like, it, it has half to it. You lift it up and like, it feels, uh, especially probably with uh, Arvo's background, you, it feels like the real deal. Uh, surprisingly, because it still, like, if you grab, like, a tart or grab one of the organs, uh, it mm -hmm. does have a little squish to it, but it still has that gold hafted feel. Hmm. A golden pancreas. <laughs> <laughs> Surely I have seen it all. I'll take the pancreas. If I can identify it. <laughs> yeah, our, our well's definitely able to go through and sip through the remains and Find that pancreas to, uh, to take home as a trophy. <laughs> Sweet. Do you think if we brought all the pieces together that they could be repaired of some of my cart? Did you say cart or did you say... <laughs> the sealant? Sealant. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> she's sorry. I can't. I, I'm not good at pronouncing it. That was part of the joke, but. Still. <laughs> I forgot about the sealant completely, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I wouldn't go that left field. <laughs> it's, it's like him bring out. It. What is it? What? I know this is like stuff for repairing like wood and doors and stuff like that. Does it come in like jars or like cups? I, I don't. I don't know what this is. Every time I try and look up, I get chalked. I don't know what old school sealant would look like. I wouldn't say a jar, but I'm willing to be persuaded otherwise. <laughs> it, it could be one of those guns you comply with. <laughs> well, if we're talking about glue, um, I, I have found in uh, historically, glue tends to come from a horse in a horse like shape. So that's going to be a lot of glue that you have, and you can just use that however you feel. Oh, what? I feel like all you'd really need is a hoof of glue at this point, but if you need more later, I assume that you have it. A horse of glue. Uh, Arwell gets it. Not quite glue. <laughs> there's, there's a bit more going on, but yeah, I get it. <laughs> You don't just you don't just like ring out a horse and get glue. <laughs> just carrying just carrying the horse leg around. I'm as a man of God, I can't say one way the one way or the other for sure. It, it's not in the it's not in my book. I'm just imagining right, I... this horse leg, and he just like shoves it and just like it's glue now. It's glue, <laughs> like those old Elmer sticks. Stick it together. Stick it together. <laughs> I think I crossed the line on goopiness there. I don't. I. I think. I think there was a line, <laughs> and, and it's it's been crossed. You, you can always count on me to take that line and go out to the other side of it, <laughs> quickly without remorse. Glorious. So <laughs> you guys have your conversation about glue, <laughs> horse legs, horses, uh, and pancreases, golden pancreases. Uh, what, what are y'all doing? So you guys see this kind of creepy marketplace. Uh, you see the, the golden statues still surrounding you. None of, none of the other ones have weapons, though. Uh, but you do see just many people, or, or statues, I should say, uh, kind of surrounding you in those three doors. Uh, which, what's uh, the party doing next? Ethics? Oh, sorry. 
No, I was going to say, I want it on record that I'm not taking anything. This all feels horrifyingly <laughs> wrong, and I am terrified of the future. So I'm not taking anything, but if there are if there are more, like, pedestrians nearby, I would like to poke one with my staff just to be like, will you react, or is it just the ones with weapons that'll react? So you do poke one of the dwarven-looking civilians, and you just hear the clink uh, of a staff hitting metal. Uh, but the statue remains inert. Uh, it doesn't move at all. I also have a slight wobble from the staff hitting it. Essex so... was terrified. <coughs> oh, I just think I just swallowed a fly. Oof. <laughs> uh, Essex... <clears throat> uh, was a bit terrified of these before because he was creeped out by them. He didn't know what to think, but they can bleed. They can die. And while they did a lot of damage to them, they died. Uh, so he, he sees it as like this big ornate door. These things were around it. They were clearly guarding it. Uh, be they some demonic statue put there or possession or like just actually just made a goal from the start. They were guarding something. This man, this man wants to know what they're regarding. So his vote is for that middle door. When, when uh, his item was a cart, I assume the cart did not survive the, the fall into the hole or the climb out of the hole. Uh, but would there be anything in this marketplace I could use as a cart or something I could carry? Uh, heavy gold objects. Oh, definitely. So there are multiple carts around that you could pilfer. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a cart, and I don't want to take a dwarven statue. There's something wrong with that. But I am definitely collecting some items, uh, such as gold swords, uh, giant golden wings <laughs> from these beasts, <laughs> and I'm just piling them in this cart. <laughs> is it a gold cart or a regular cart? The cart is regular. Uh, so you see that a lot of the um, kind of like the wooden and stone materials look to be unchanged. So would you say that it's only the materials that were once alive that have turned to gold? That's definitely a fair assumption. So you've seen the grapes, the mm, apples, the leaves. Yeah. <laughs> the superior craftsmanship of wood has survived this devastation. Ethics feels validated in this choice of career. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna like look at my hands and just like look myself over and I'm curious to see if any part of me is <laughs> shifting at all. Am I golder or, like, than changing... I remember? <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> Well are, are you just yeah, so look at yourself. You look completely fine. You look untouched, you look to be pretty good. Oh thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Wenlin like, would not have thought to do that, so I'm nope. loading up the guard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, ah, oh, if I look at my arms, that's just straight metagaming. Nah, man, like, that's enough pancreas. Where are the lungs at? <laughs> Groove is is the only one smart enough to check. Like, mm, no corruption. <laughs> so as he's pulling no, out the pancreas, yeah. I, I'm like the, the 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 dude that can't go in my cart, man. Like I, you, you can't put the pancreas in my, my cart. I mean, <laughs> it's just like dripping. I'll, I'll dry it off. I'll wrap it even. I'm just... my good man. Can you have something that won't leak all over my cart? Well, go get your own cart, actually. <laughs> go get your... right, is there another cart? There's definitely multiple carts. Uh, so we've, he's taking one. We'll say Yo. there is another cart in there as well. <laughs> Yo, hey man, my gold is a motivator. Greed activated. Let's go. So, I don't know, whatever. Arwell's a weird guy. He's dangerous, but he's lazy. And he's dangerously lazy. You need the sealant in that cart <laughs> to stop all the bleeding action going on. <laughs> so he's just gonna load up the corpses, like the the ones that were felled by them. And it's like, well, this ought to make this ought to, you know, pique somebody's curiosity. Why not? And just load them up there. And yeah, that's that's fine. He'll he'll. And besides, it's something he can lean on as he pushes. So there you go. 
All right. Uh, and I guess you want to go towards the big doors, everybody? Yeah. That... yeah. Can we go over the three doors again a, real quick? A massive smile with us taking things from here. I want to point that out to everyone. <laughs> Just imagine us wheeling up. We're going to find more of those things. <laughs> and they're going to see the bodies in the cart. <laughs> they're going to peace out. <laughs> Intimidation factor. Morale destroy. <laughs> ever see ever see a Necron Slayer? Yeah. <laughs> Greetings, gentlemen. You wanna join my caravan? <laughs> For every well, I forgot who somebody wanted to get a description of the doors again. Uh, so the one straight ahead of you where you guys seem to be heading towards are the ones that had the two golden gargoyles guarding them uh, as well as had the intricate like large kind of a, intricate large uh, stone carved doors uh, there was kind of an ornate feeling to them uh, on the left side uh, those wooden or left and right side both had wooden doors uh, but on the left side you found a lot of the statues kind of crowded around them uh, a lot of people in motion like they were looking they're running towards it some kind of look like they're like, kind of hustling towards that door where the right side just seemed to have a pretty empty look uh, not as many statues around it not people clustered around it uh, just seemed to be kind of abandoned. I'm up for the middle. Uh, ethics thing said, like, this was guarded for a reason. And whatever that reason, it's going to be fun. Whatever we get, to, whatever's <laughs> going to be behind there. Like, me as a person, I'm scared of the golden gargoyles. But Arwell, as a greedy idiot, <laughs> is going towards the big stuff. So let's go with that. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Is it our stealth checks a thing? I'm just wondering if I can try and open that door quietly stealth or anything like that. Uh, so dexterity checks will be, or dexterity saves will be a, a stealth check. Uh, okay, so, I, I would like to do that. Perfect. Alternatively, we could take one of these statues and use it as a battering ram. <laughs> That's if the door is locked. Uh, the door is not locked, fortunately. So I, I, I've gotten, I rolled an 18 matching my 18 decks. So I think, I think that's a success. You got an 18 decks? Yeah, I rolled three sixes. Oh, nice. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm garbage in my strength. But you no, know, I, I, like I said, I feel like I have loaded die today, which is odd for me. Usually they're loaded on the ones. Perfect, yes. Yeah, so you would have been great today, actually. <laughs> yeah, plenty of success on this one. Uh, yeah, you open the doors, uh, just kind of quickly, quietly, uh, without disturbing uh, too much of the scene behind. Uh, and as you open the doors, you kind of hear the sound uh, of hammers ringing out. Uh, it's kind of sound like the rhythmic uh, bangs of smithing at work. Uh, you feel a little bit of heat. Uh, you see light and fire flickering from uh, kind of the the edges abound. Uh, you just hear this crash, smack, move. Uh, kind of almost like the the sounds uh, of things being wheeled in and out uh, with a smack, move, uh, and then the sound of pouring liquid. Oh, perfect. Somewhere I can complain to about some management and what has happened here. I, I would point out, and I would point out quietly, we were literally just attacked by golden gargoyles. And based on the description that God has just presented, I would argue that it's the sounds as though they're pouring molten gold in there and making more of these abominations, which, while very profitable in your cart, will try and kill us. Oh, to complain and death about is literally around every court. <laughs> Not only are they making you, more of these abominations, they failed to kill us. <laughs> no, they failed to also. kill me and Arwell. They very nearly killed you two. <laughs> but they didn't kill me. Oh, Thanks to good, a good, good man. We have with you. Good man, I hear what you are saying about the killing thing. But also, I would like to point out the key words of liquid gold. And profitable. After you, my good man. Yes. 
All right, let's uh, yeah. let's Ooh. carefully, quietly inspect our potential uh, acquisitions. Yeah. I will leave my cart. <laughs> <laughs> With that's a wise decision. That's a wheel in my cart in there. <laughs> I can imagine like looking behind the shoulder all over and over, like I don't know, like <laughs> you just you just knock the door open, carry in the cart, fill this up, please. I have things to do. Please, I want all of the gold. I need all the liquid gold in my cart. <laughs> if required, I shall crawl, require another. Let me look this up. Can you call and me someone to carry the proof? Oh, you have seal it. I think so. It's a seal it. Hey! <laughs> Just, that's what that's what sealant does. Yes. Will it, will it hold we up have to a like stretch 1400 for degrees Fahrenheit? Yeah. Who knows? Like practical skills are not my forte. <laughs> that's a fact. There's, there's so many jokes I'd like to make, hmm. but I, I'm going to hold my tongue. We're, we're, we're only yeah. stuff, right? I'm guessing if you take something that's liquid gold and you put it in a wooden cart, uh, the wooden cart just catches on fire. But I'm not a you know an engineer, <laughs> so. <laughs> For every, so everybody roll me uh, dexterity save if you guys are stealthy and to leave your cards. I have by. failed. All right. Uh, as you guys kind of maneuver into it, let me know who have failed as we go through. But I'll give you a little piece oh, of the scene. A hard fail. Right. Um, Nat 20? Uh, 19. 19. Oh, not one. Natural one. Nice. Another Nat yeah. one, too, right? Yeah, yeah. Again, I, I feel. Like, I wish I had a separate camera just for the dice because I'm like, bro, this, the dice this, camera. This is, yeah, this is too good. Like, I'm like, I'm any other game, terrible, but here, killing it. Uh, seriously, wow. yeah, I feel like I'm gonna have to start fudging rolls just so you believe that I'm failing. <laughs> <laughs> That's really why I, I, I've said this before. But this is really why I open rolls a DM because, like, because I usually have pretty, uh, as a player, shitty luck for dice. As a DM, like, I roll a decent amount of crits, uh, or get breath weapons back very easily. <laughs> I've seen oh, it. I, I, I still, I still fear the teeth. The teeth still get me. Oh, <laughs> I forgot that boss. Uh, there's a boss I made that had. Uh, I can't remember if I made him or you found a stat block for him, but he could shoot teeth at people, and he had like a recharge for it. I think like, he got like five rounds. He got Almost four on five max. rounds. <laughs> no, listen. The first time he shot that off, Tegan rolled almost max damage on that. And if I remember correctly, I was point blank and it got the other two tanks in there too for like 70 or so damage. It was terrifying. It was vicious. <laughs> uh, they fought a dragon recently too, and I got it out of the breath weapon three out of six rounds, which. Decent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, back to this one. Uh, it says you guys, as you're coming in, I. Uh, Definitely a bit of noise going through, but before you guys alert any noise, uh, you hear just those rhythmic hammers, the pouring of metal. Uh, you see, like, here's like almost work songs being sung. Uh, you hear them like, pour the metal, hammer it hard, pour the metal for the dead god. Uh, you hear that just kind of echoing out uh, throughout uh, the cavern. Rolf is going to going. nope his way out of this and turn <laughs> immediately around. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to speak going on. You could substitute their words for words of your own god. So instead of for the dead god, for the... I'm sorry, I just don't catch your face. Regardless of faith, you're not making the most convincing argument, indicating that maybe they don't mean dead god when they no, say no, 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 dead no. god. I'm simply saying, I, I think they don't mean dead god, but I think you can substitute that with your own and simply <laughs> hear their song for yourself. <laughs> to give yourself some more morale as we come in here to complain and likely bash your head. 
and and we are canonically having this conversation as in the open in front yeah, of them yeah, as, as we <laughs> entered in and failing our stealth rolls. Like, can we see them from where we are, or we just uh, hear their sing song? So you couldn't see them initially, uh, but as you guys come in, uh, either by having your conversation or some of you just not being the most quiet uh, entrance uh, makers, you do hear the hammering cease. Uh, you see hear the song stop and, and kind of right in mid song hammer it hard uh, and you hear the sounds of scuffling and sounds like of rustling and heavy feet upon stone uh, moving towards you what are you guys doing I am running in the exact same direction all of those stone folk looked like they were running okay <laughs> Seems like the only smart move here. <laughs> yep. And oh. so that's what I'm doing. Wendlin, he's all about that uh, that profit, and uh, he thinks that maybe he should just take his cart and leave. So he's going <laughs> to go and just say, and the dead god continue, and just close the door. I think this interest in that hammer he heard smashing down on stuff. Can he see one of those? Is it like something that can use as a weapon, or is it just like a tool? So you couldn't see any of the um, uh, of the people making it. I'll say for right now, uh, but you, you could wait around and see. Wait around. Listen, this man <laughs> loves danger. He's dangerous. <laughs> But he's not totally stupid. He, he says he would complain. He's got a bit of a sense of humor. A uh, bit of truth in that, but a bit of a sense of humor. But he is not suicidal. So everyone's getting out. He's getting out. Perfectly. Oh, go ahead. Oh, Arwell's going to um, curse himself because that song was really catchy. And now it's stuck in his head. Pour the metal. Hammer it hard for the. And he's just like trying to get it out of his head, but he can't. <laughs> and he's just like humming it to himself as he's running away. Oh, it's stuck in your head, too. Oh, yeah. Damn the boy. Oh, yes. Well, but either way, he is leaving because <laughs> uh, that's, that's enough of a souvenir from this room. I'll, I'll take the catchy song. Thank you. <clears throat> Perfect. Everybody, uh, roll me a strength save. See how hard you guys can hoof it out of there. Uh, and uh, Waylon, actually, uh, Arwell and uh, Waylon, uh, I think you guys are you both bringing your carts. Oh, I'm not leaving the cart. All right. Waylon with uh, disadvantage. Uh, Arwell, if you're bringing your cart, uh, disadvantage as well. Yo. Oh, okay. Mom, so... mom, 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 money. All right. So a 19. I failed by one. <sighs> Seven. I failed. <laughs> and a big fat sixteen. <laughs> I like, like that, huh? So you guys. Uh, oh, I fail hard, by the way. Yeah. So, uh, Waylon Arland uh, fail uh, hard. It sounds like. How are Harkness, uh, as well as uh, I'm blanking on the other name. Uh, oh, it's on there now. Gruff doing. Uh, that that's a that's a big fail for Groot. Groot, <laughs> it's a seventeen over four, so just loads of not, especially especially being the guy running first. <laughs> so I like to imagine that this is like a race, like an Olympic race, and the guy in front just falls over, and now everyone else has to do checks to avoid just falling <laughs> over the man who already fell. That's what's just happened in my head, Ken. I'm, I'm pushing a cart, and I'm not really swerving that cart, just FYI. <laughs> oh that, that's this fine. That's really... what you do, you, man. Uh, I failed by one, uh, so that, that still failed. I believe we all failed. So everybody failed. So you guys, I don't know if, uh, if the trip up stopped you guys, and uh, you all just slowed down quite a bit as you're maneuvering through. Uh, but you hear that chanting begin again. Intruders in our home. I don't have a rhyme for that. I, I apologize. I don't have a rhyme for that. I was like, I don't have... come up with that. Uh, Grind them into stone. There we go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> 
like, I, it was one of those I started the sentence like, you'll find the end as you get to it. You'll find the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that doesn't happen live. <laughs> and usually, actually, I, I I hate to say I do that quite a bit, but this one, like, right, I'm not the best rhymer. So I am not the best <laughs> Crush them like a gnome. Beat them into stone. There we go. Uh, so you do hear that song increase, uh, and as you <laughs> slowly make your way towards the uh, the back to the marketplace, you see these creatures emerge through, uh, and they've got a dwarven look to them, but they look paler, more sickly than most dwarves you've seen before. Uh, they also have a little bit more of a, a disheveled appearance. Uh, they've got deep white beard and glowing red eyes. Uh, they all carry these hammers that look like they could switch between being smithing hammers and war hammers. Uh, and you see five of them uh, emerge uh, from behind, uh, kind of around the, the bend. Uh, just singing their song and clapping their hammers into their hands rhythmically uh, as they make their way towards the crew. Uh, you do still have some space between you guys. Uh, there's, they're, let's say, about uh, 80 feet away from you so far. Um, what, are you, what are you all doing? Getting out of the wrong neighborhood. Uh... I... Um... I think I want to put all of my umph into this cart <laughs> and just, you know, chew our will train my way out of here. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to jump into the cart. Yeah. yeah. Just, just, <laughs> you got to get as much momentum and strength in that, in those 80 feet. Like they're looking menacing, but you know, I got a bunch of gold on this thing and a heck of a lot of momentum. Let's, Let's see. Mm -hmm. Look like chicken. Yeah, I'm drafting right behind you here. All <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Arwell and Wayland, they are pushing the carts, getting some Tokyo Drift drafting going along with uh, the, the cart racing as the, the Dwargers make their way towards them. Uh, what are uh, Harkness... Uh, 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 and uh, Gorth doing again. I, I mispronounced it again, but I blanked on what it was again. No, no, it's fine. That's part of the game. <sighs> so, um, first, I assume I'm getting run over by carts. That's my first guess. Um, I'm gonna wait for that to finish. Um, but if I get if I get to get up before the carts crush me, I uh, original plan run like hell into the direction that looked like everyone was running. Perfect. Well, you could, unless you really want to be crushed by the carts, uh, that was a, a you thing on that one. <laughs> that was a, you are definitely able to get up uh, and make your way through. So uh, with uh, you, this does have a dash axis. You are able to make it towards that door. Uh, you kind of have statues in between you. Uh, you do see kind of like uh, this golden dwarfs, humans, elves kind of scattered around this door, all in motion. Uh, wh what are you doing? I, I would open that door. Perfect. So you're able to open the door, and that's where we'll end you off at. Uh, Ethics, what are you doing? Jumping in the cart. <laughs> Whose cart are you jumping into? <laughs> It would start with like him limp running from his previous in injuries and jumping onto whoever's the slowest, or running on that and then doing another leap onto the one in the front, just like go go go. Uh, just yelling that as he's pointing forward, like that's going to help. Uh, so yeah, he goes from one to the one in front, the one furthest from these from these dwarves. <laughs> Well, we'll get to see who's I further in the lead uh, as we do a round of straight saving throws. Uh, oh, no. I assume it's still with disadvantage with my cart. Still a disadvantage if you're pushing nah, the cart. Not giving up that cart. Uh, I fail. <laughs> <laughs> 17. <laughs> Actually, uh, both of them would have failed. I, um, I rolled, uh, was it disadvantage, a 16. All right. Uh, yeah. So you guys. Uh, so 
You're 17 to 16, so you wind up on Arwell's cart. Ethics. <laughs> Arwell is just inches ahead of Waylon as they're both pushing their carts full of wings, uh, a pancreas in Arwell's cart <laughs> as they make their way towards the door. Uh, Grunt, you are behind the. You are through the door. You see your compatriots just slowly pushing their carts in there. Uh, with Arwell slowing down a little bit now that Ethics has gotten in there. Uh, you see those dwarves approaching. Uh, they are actually going to. Uh, they are going to be right up on you guys. Uh, so they dash in. Hammer still clapping, uh, still singing their songs about intruders in their home. Bash them into stone. Bash them like a gnome uh, and turn them into stone. Uh, so we're gonna roll. Uh, well, at least you three will have to roll initiative. I don't know what Gruss gonna do as he sees this all go down. Uh, so everybody roll initiative. Uh, dexterity saving throws. Hello. Go fast. Is that is that how you're supposed to pronounce it? I. I won't one? lie, I've been I've been pronouncing it Durengar this entire time for my entire career of D&D for the uh, Deep Dwarves. I don't know, I thought, I thought it was Dwarves, but I've, I, got no I don't idea. know if I've ever actually heard it out loud, so I make up a lot of my pronunciations if I haven't heard it, so good chance it's made up. Good ch- I think it actually does change from edition to edition. <laughs> Um, so if I if I make it, I here. if I make it, I pass. You make it to pass. Yep. Hey, my first pass. Woo. Hey, I, I like this nat twenty, babe. Oh, that's right. I meet right. my dexterity. All right. Yeah. So you see, out of the five dwarves, three of them do secede. Uh, who all secedes on this group? I, I succeed on my running away check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually succeeded on the initiation. All right. Thank you. Uh, we'll have the party go first. Uh, so, uh, it sounds like uh, one of the parties running quite smartly. Uh, the other party, uh, Waylon, uh, Ethics, what are you guys doing? If, if I may make a suggestion that I know will fall on deaf ears, but I feel like I should make it. Perhaps we could try and close the door before they get to us and perhaps knock over a cart in its way so they can't. We may lose the profit, but they uh, it might slow them down. Counterpoint, I have a large trap. I dropped the trap as we're running. We got a large what? I have a large trap. Oh, nice! Uh, did you read how traps work in the system? I do not know. Let me no. look it up real quick. Let me look. Time to learn. I have no idea. Uh, so, large trap, it's a thing. They don't explain how a large trap works. Uh, that's a that's a conundrum. Why would you want to know that? <laughs> that's a conundrum. So, uh, I don't know. Let's say... Uh, Make a. Hmm. Uh, what, what? Argue for the skill of your choice. How, how's uh, how's uh, Harkness setting up this trap? Oh, I'm screwing myself over here, but I gotta what? be true to it. So, absolutely strength. Because this. I imagine this trap is basically like a bear trap, but instead of a. of like clamps. It's a, it is a flail that's pulled back, and when you step on it, it just slams into your face. Uh, like, a, like in Dwarf Fortress, you, you can make traps like that. Uh, they're like little bludgeons that come up and just smash you. Uh, and so I imagine he just yeets it out with like full force to be like right in front of them as they're coming for us. Unfortunately, uh, Ethic's strength right now is a three. Alright. This game I doesn't have inspiration. I would have gave you inspiration for if it was a regular game, but this is a regular so roll uh roll a strength saving throw. Uh three Good or luck. or better. Three or better we'll say. Uh usually I say three or worse, but three or better. Uh good success on Unfortunately it. I'm just barely two above it. So I imagine 
It's if it was a crit fail, I would have said as he was pulling him back, and he accidentally threw by me. But since it's not, he goes. Hmm. Does he even leave his hand? He's very injured at the moment. <laughs> uh, you see that trap just kind of clatter to the ground. Uh, and you see, he kind of hear the dwarves continue their song. We all see a trap. Never take a nap. Continue to attack. Put them in our pack. Uh, and they can just continue moving on. Uh, well, I'm doing... Wait, what was this with me? Well, I did all I could do. <laughs> Fresh, sir! Look, look in the... Uh, uh, oh, well, just like... Faster, faster, just rub it, work! Right. Um... Can I pick up, so I have an axe, which I assume is one-handed. Can I pick up the golden sword and just use both and just smack them with it? I think there are dual-wielding rules. Let me look yeah. that up real quick. That is one of the few dual rules I saw. I... You roll both and take the better, I think, for damage? All right. Really it's, it's basically advantage. Nice. Okay. I am not leaving this gold behind. I'm going down <laughs> swinging. Yeah, so use regular sword modifiers for their uh, stats for that. Uh, right, so 2d8s. 2d8s with advantage? That's kind of cool for the dual wielding. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Did I miss something? How'd you do? Oh, 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 sorry. Uh, five damage. All right. Oh, where the door is at? Five damage? Yep. Yeah. That's literally just stuff. They've got four HP and one armor. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, so I come across with the the sword, and it kind of glances off his axe, and then I just come down with the the or I have his warhammer, and then I come down with the axe right on his head. You slice through one of the dwargers, uh, leaving four behind uh, as they continue to pound their hammers and sing their songs uh, and make their way towards the party. Uh, so did everybody go? No, we haven't done Arwell. What's Arwell doing? I mean, uh, he didn't he didn't do so well with that initial roll. That is, he did uh, the opposite of well. Oh, you failed that one. Uh, so how bad yeah. did you fail by? Um, well, my my dex is eleven, and I rolled twenty. So oh, yeah, so you get the the hard fail. All yeah. right, so two of the dwargers are going to go before you. Uh, so we're gonna have uh, one is going to attack. For Arwell, uh, the other is going to uh, try to go after Waylon, who just sliced through uh, their poor boss. You see them heft their war hammers up uh, and lean down on these, and these are D tens. Oh, that's not good. That's a, that's a mighty big number there. Uh, better than two D six, or slightly better than two D six. So there we go. Oof. All right. Uh, so Waylon, nine to you. Oh, I'm Darwell. <laughs> I'm still up, actually. Nice. How bad does that put you? That puts me at one. I had two armor and I had eight health. Oh, nice. Uh, you're still on HP. Yeah, you're you're good. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I had one HP. Now I don't. I'm down to nine strength. Nine strength. All right. Yeah, so you are. I'm, yeah, I'm down. You, you are down. Uh, so you s see them kind of lift up their war hammer and bring it down. Uh, you hear them just yell, hammer it down. Uh, they smack you, you bleeding, uh, muscles aching, bones shattering. 
Uh, you're still, you're conscious, uh, but you're bleeding and you may die uh, if this is not taken care of, but you can still crawl. And I think they don't define what crawl means, but I'm going to say that means half speed. Uh, so you can still move 20 feet. Uh, right now you are about, because uh, you, do you make an, you made an attack, yeah. So you are still about, uh, oh, about, oh no, you haven't gone yet. So yeah, you're 20 feet movement. Uh, so you could dash with your turn if you'd like to to get to 40 feet movement. Uh, however you'd like to move. Uh, pathetically. Hmm? Um... Well, so what happens with the cart? I mean, it had a little bit of momentum built up. Does it just come to a, a, a like a halt, or this is my my plan of action before I met such a you know abrupt end to my momentum there was to like charge him with the cart, give him a good old oh yeah, well how you like metal, boom. Um, I guess I'll just crawl towards the exit. So the the cart is still moving, but it's still moving towards the exit. Super slow though. It's like moving like it's kind of like <laughs> slowly just wheeling ahead. Uh, like probably like this room is slightly sloped, uh, so it'll get there in maybe five ten minutes, but <laughs> not immediately. <laughs> at the same time, I'll get there by right at this rate. <laughs> yep, off I go, arm over arm. All right. So uh, just, we've got. Arwell down, crawling, uh, about 40 feet away from the exit. Uh, we've got Ethics and Wayland still on the other side of the door. Uh, we've got, uh, I keep forgetting the pronunciation, Gwerth uh, on the other side. Uh, Gwerth is like, he's. I think he's bolted. He's deep inside the door. Uh, let's do another round of the Dexterity Saving Throws. Ethics was on... Uh... Our Will's cart. Oh yeah, he was. Yeah, so he's he's still he's still in rather unfortunately. Alright, so you are slowly you're kind of in that slowly wheeling cart, uh moving forward. Mm. Ooh, that's a crit success. Nice. Alright. Failure. They have failed. Uh, so, uh, party members with success. What are you guys doing? For what it's worth, I will not get butt hurt if you guys leave me to die. Just, <laughs> just throwing that out there. Oh, that's my plan. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh no. So I, I, I see that uh, my compatriot is is down, and he did save me after all when I fell. Think of the money. Uh, but I also notice I have this really nice gold sword in my hand that's probably worth some money and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take the sword and call it good. <laughs> Alright. So Waylon, uh, you are 40 feet away. You can dash right through uh, and make your way through the door with an extra 40 feet to spare. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Arwell. Ethics, what are you doing? I'm, I'm going to become one with stone, apparently. <laughs> but till then, I'm going to crawl towards the exit at my rather quick speed of, uh, what is it, 40 feet? With your that's, some fast, that's some fast crawling, man. Get your rug rats on. Yeah, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, ethics is vanishing into the ether. You are kind of vanishing, ethics. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that should that's more appropriate for me over here. Come on now. Hmm. Ethics are gone. Ethics. To buy. Oh well, some more time. It's gonna fight these guys. All right. He's gonna try and take these guys on. He thinks he thinks big of himself. He's a dangerous man. So dangerous, in fact, he got the motive. So dangerous, <laughs> in fact, he's now going into carpentry, an honorable <laughs> occupation of wood. The trees he once climbed are now will now be felled and worked by his own hand. And these guys are nothing like trees. Easy, easy to fell. At least that's what he's telling himself right now. Lots of blood. 
Yes. So he's gonna be swinging. Man, I, I gave you the out, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He, he, uh, six. Six. Oh, that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. So no. he comes up, comes up to one of these guys, raises his own mace, which I imagine is flanched with nice little spike points at the tip, just like starts beating into it, just very viciously, brutally, not cleanly at all, just making sure it's a fine taste first. Uh, and then he'll look up and yell out, Oh yeah, Mathix! Who else wants to be turned into a new piece of furniture today? Uh, and that's gonna be, that's gonna be him. <laughs> well, three dwarves remain, uh, with Arwell just reaching the door at the end of his, uh, turn. All right, they are going to focus on ethics first. Uh, so you see two of the dwarves. Oh, quickly turn to Arwell as he's leaving. Oh, are you? Uh, I thought you were just dipping. All right, go ahead. What are you doing? <laughs> well, I'm just wondering. Like, <laughs> I so far, to get I've gotten to the door, or like to to one of the doors. All the folks are running through, and I'm wondering if I opened it, what do I see on the other side? Oh, yeah, so uh, as you, uh, and then eventually Waylon, uh, as he comes through, you do see uh, kind of a long, narrow stone hallway that seems to be sloping upwards. Okay. Yeah, just going to head in that direction. Um, and as I get on the other side of the door, does it look like there's anything I could barricade this door closed with? Oh, definitely. So as you... Get to the other side, you do see kind of uh, multiple sconces with uh, kind of metal uh, lanterns or metal uh, torches within them. Uh, you could probably uh, disti- uh, extinguish one of the torches and use that metal to kind of bar the door if you'd like. So I'm going to call out to the party. Everyone, get the heck out of there. Get in here. I'm going to block lock them out. And I'm just kind of hoping that folks r- do that. And if they don't, then I will leave them all to die. <laughs> well, you do see Waylon. You do see Waylon. With his sword. Yeah, would, would I have enough, um, I guess, movement to, to drag uh, Arwell through the, the doorway? Are we not close enough, or is that not possible? Because he can move 40 feet. Oh, I'm not sure if there's rules for this, but I'm going to say a strength saving throw to see if you can drag our will through with you. Ah, he did save me. All right, I will attempt it. It's worth trying. <laughs> and then if it's too heavy. Oh, fail. All right, <laughs> peace, bud. <laughs> yeah, you try to, like, probably like golden sword still at hand trying to drag our well through yeah. but he's too it, you got gold in your hand you can't let go of the gold to save him uh this is too heavy uh so yeah like both my hands are full and i can't get a good grab so i'm just like oh that's it bud i tried <laughs> good faith just... effort good faith. <laughs> i can just see like the 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 motion of like reaching out like but your hands are full but they're coming up but your hands are full. I tried. And I'm out of here. He saved my life, but gold. <laughs> but gold. Yeah. Uh, I don't even think that's the effect of magic. <laughs> this is gold. All right. So. Demon gold. Waylon, you are through the door. Oh, are you shutting the door? You're mute on mute if you're talking. We can hear you. Oh. Crap. Uh, so I had an idea that might help you with your, my hands are filled with sword and axe, so I can't lift a human being. (laughs) Have you considered stabbing Arwell with the sword (laughs) and the axe and using it to drag him? Just an idea. I feel here, like it oh might. Gosh. Here, you hold this. <laughs> if if I was to stab him with the axe and the sword and drag him, would that give me advantage? <laughs> it's just like a bug coming in, like yoink, drag. Like in all fairness, I'd aim for under the armpits. You know, That's right. right. 
<laughs> it would make it easier to move his corpse. <laughs> yeah, he's I, I was, uh, not not doing so hot with the whole health <laughs> thing. To, being like, healthy. Carry him with the flat end of the blade. <laughs> No, that's too heavy. You you got it. You really got to get in there to get. That's, you know, but it's yeah, a sword. It's no. gonna slide right out, or you're gonna cut more flesh. I mean, no. logistically, like now I'm thinking about it. You stab in, and then you kind of have to pull by the hilt, and you are going to be cutting, basically twisting the knife as you drag him. But at the same time, he's coming with you. Like you're making progress. Well, you could do an Artorius and like stab him once, and then fling him over to the door. No, just just, just it, let me die. You know, this you, point. I, don't, I don't want to play your character for you. I just thought it's an option out there you might not have considered. Yeah, uh, yeah. So he he I, he would have considered that, and he goes, "Man, what a way to go! You can be ground into stone." Peace. Peace. Wow. Perfect. So we've got. Uh, so, are you, uh, this guy comes down to uh, Gort? Are you closing the door after you see Wayland come through uh, and see uh, Harkness doing battle with the Dwergers? I, I, I want to give not, ethics. I would not throw a fit if you if you let us die. Personally, I well, I feel like what I'm what I'm thinking is like I want to, I want to tr like grab what I need to barricade the door and then pull one of those. Once the last man's in, you close it. But if it looks like there's another guy gaining first, then you close it in advance. Like I want to wait and make that decision but if ethics looks like he's just gonna you know fight to the death over there because wood conquers all then then i guess it's me and wenlin there are three and, you know, workers uh, that have uh, not gone yet <laughs> you will be remembered uh if the door's closing he will yell out just like if i am to meet my maker today Leave the years I have left for you behind. Okay. Arbol's okay. just gonna Closing look the at the door. Arbol's gonna look at the Ian door. Ian Realize that it's incredibly far away, and just kind of say, ah, "This is fine," and just kind of put his head down and wait for the next hammer swing. <laughs> Uh, ethics will and also yell out, "Just like if you come over here, I can use you as a weapon." <laughs> just and let me die. <laughs> Pin cushion. One force instrument. Man, just let me be a corpse. If you could slow them down, that would be greatly appreciated. Oof. All right, ethics. I hope you have decent armor. No. <laughs> Two I of do them not. went. Uh, five and seven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the seven alone, uh, actually no, the seven only left me on one thing, but the five just like, uh, dead, like very dead, like very, like way beyond dead. <laughs> so you see both the dwarves kind of raise their hammers and one goes down, smash him into stone, and the other goes and break his bones, uh, and just goofied. Poor ethics. Uh, just, just fortunately a bloody mess left behind. I, I have a very vivid image of the one that goes smash him into stone, just breaking his leg, uh, just like <laughs> to knock him down while the other one just smashes his head. In, instant, no, no way for him to, to really retaliate to that big one right there. The show won the helmet. He was not wearing a helmet. Right. And, and I also have a very vivid uh, image in my head of someone with a name tag that says Ethics Harkness 2 <laughs> bursting through the door that I'm running towards <laughs> saying, I'm here to help. I'm just like the other guy, but I have a 2 at the end of my name. So, you know, I came next and I'm here to help. Have you like seen that, that's just what I see. Not that I want to run your game for you, but I feel like that would be that would be helpful. Have you seen my twin brother? We have the same name, but our parents are lazy. Uh, ethics, 
Essex has met his end here. He tried to fight valiantly. Too bad that you should not fight multiple people at once. There's no good out for that. So, uh, well, uh, you would normally have, uh, this was a two, but fortunately with you being on the ground, they get a little bit of a bonus to that. Uh, so let me see, I forget what the bonus is. Uh, so it's a two initially, uh, but it's from an advantageous position for them. Uh, I think it's as a d4 if I remember right. I think that comes out to dead. Yeah, what's the yeah. Yeah. That math tracks. It comes <laughs> out to dead. Uh, so unfortunately, poor Arwell, you see another hammer come down. Uh, and this guy just sh shouts out. Uh, for the dead god, uh, as uh, the hammer comes smashing down, we kind of cut from this gruesome scene uh, to Waylon uh, and Gruff as you guys are just darting through the stone tunnel. Uh, and this is not an unperilous journey, but you do kind of maneuver through, avoiding uh, different traps and other dwarger guards and uh, even some more foul beast uh but eventually you are able to make your way to sunshine and fresh air uh as you emerge from this great crevice that had been carved uh into what was once the mountain of ada uh and you do see freedom uh and around you uh the, the land uh the grass the trees turned into solid gold uh, with golden boulders and golden remnants of the mountain behind you uh, but you have escaped from the ruins of Ada unfortunately down two companions who well you had not loaned them for a while one of them had saved your life at least uh, and the other <laughs> uh, the other had uh, he, he sacrificed his life to, to save the give you some more time to get away from those dwargers. But you are free. Winland takes a moment to remember his compatriots, and then he looks down at his golden sword and gives a shrug. Goes, ah, I bet I can sell it. <laughs> Nothing like some good Gru gold. Gruth will, uh, will pull the 10 gold coins he got at character creation out of his pocket, drop it in Wendland's uh, cart and be like, I don't trust this crap. And just keep yeeting <laughs> off into the distance as fast as he can. Get as far away from anything gold, gold plated, gold reminiscent, gold aspirational, anything. I'm, I'm moving towards a copper or silver economy. That's what I want. Well, that's a smart move for not taking anything from Mr. Tolman. Because you, you, eventually you guys both do make your way off of the island, finding some of the boats that were kind of chartered in the harbor, and you can make your way from Ada. But Tolman, you, you, Gorth, you go through and you live a, a good life. I mean, I don't know what happens after you, after you leave, but you are okay. Uh, Will? Uh, with all the the golden sword, the the golden grapes, apples, and coins you've acquired, you get a good night on board the ship. But you wake up and your arm is cold. And then day you later, a good for that. your shoulder and your chest are gold. And the day after that, you just don't wake up at all, and just all that's left behind is a a gold whaling statue. Yes, but someone <laughs> stole that for all. some money. I told you all. <laughs> Everything here is wrong. But no, I want money. Uh, and so that's where we'll wrap up the adventure. Uh, with a lot of the party in a little bit of a worse spot, but hey, one person escaped Ada. Uh, well, two people escaped Ada, <laughs> technically, but one person truly escaped Ada uh, <laughs> before the win. Uh, so this is uh, our first playthrough, and I'll try to Karen, as I believe it is pronounced. Uh, I know we probably, and I probably, I should say, messed up quite a bit of the rules, but uh, this is our first run-through of it, just trying it out. Uh, 
I like it for a low prep system. Uh, I did not do a ton of prep outside of picking out a couple monsters that I wanted to use. Uh, but yeah, I, I, actually, what do you guys think of it before we wrap up? I quite enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like the simplicity. Mm, oh yeah, I mean, three stats, just, oh hey, look at that, I fell, I, I got up, I'm better now, and I'm different. Very fun, very, I don't know, keeps on your toes. It, it's, mm-hmm. it's short, sweet. I love this horror stuff, just shoot me up with that heroin that sounds amazing i'm loving this this horror theme everything it's great Perfect. we'll definitely have to run some more with this i think because this was i wanted to try it out i didn't want to prep too much i want this to be kind of what i could just run in case people cancel or uh i have a free day and i can just run a game uh so this one did kind of minimal one outside of picking the guys so this would definitely be what i could kind of bring back uh, yeah, I liked it. Uh, I definitely want to read some more of the rules, so just to make sure there's some things I had to guess on. But yeah, so we'll probably see more of these ones in the future. Uh, and then uh, for anybody that's new to the channel, I know I've said this a couple times, drop a follow. I uh, don't want to be repetitive about it, but we, every Tuesday and then soon to be Thursdays, uh, we'll have games on here as well. Uh, for my homebrew D&D game, too, and uh, that's going to be... Uh, how many, I think I said 10 sessions. There's about 10 sessions left in their current campaign with this one. Uh, so September-ish, probably, we'll be throwing this one on stream too. So every Thursday, you know, you'll see some uh, D&D as well, my Kazia world. Uh, I wanted to stream this one earlier, but it was already 50 sessions deep for the campaign. And even for explaining it to like people who know a little bit about it, like this is too much. Like nobody would understand exactly what's <laughs> going on. Uh, so we went for campaign two for that. So keep tuned for that. Uh, and then definitely join us for Coyote and Crow. Uh, Tuesday, the 31st of May, 7 PM. We'll be giving away a copy of the PDF. So come through, uh, make sure you can enter to win. And uh, hopefully you'll be lucky and get a D20 or an at 20 on that and get your own copy. So uh, join us, but thank you guys for coming and we'll see you all next Tuesday.